Today I wanted to start reviewing a new framework in the channel and it is Nightwatch.js. What it is, it is an integrated framework for performing automated end-to-end -end testing on web applications and websites across all major browsers. What it means, it means that we can use the different web drivers, right? Such as Geekle driver for Firefox, Chrome driver for Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge driver for Edge and Safari driver for Safari, right? If, if we're using um, Mac OS, right? So uh, another important thing here is that it is reading on or in Node.js and he uses the W3C uh, web driver API to interact with the different browsers, as I told you before, right? Uh, if you want to take a look of the architecture, here you have more details. If you want to know what is a web driver, here you have another good in, uh, interesting uh, explanation. And it is also important that it supports uh, Selenium Grid and cloud providers. We can use a, a Selenium Grid if you want to, or we can use, I don't know, any service such as browsers, uh, browser stacks, SOS Labs, cross-browser testing and Lambda test. Okay, guys, let's start taking a look of how we can install the Nightwatch framework, okay? The, the only prerequisite here is to install a Node.js, and then we have here the command to start working with this. It is npm init Nightwatch, okay? I'm going to copy this, and I'll be pasting here in my console log, well, the command that I need, npm init Nightwatch, okay? You're going to see that as soon as I have done this, a uh, well, in my case, it is not going to happen because I have done this before, but uh, you're gonna need to um, well, proceed, right? Because it needs a, a package that is not installed in your computer. And well, it is the create Nightwatch package, okay? So you have to uh, probably type Y and then enter to install the package. And then you're gonna have the same view that I have here, okay? As you can see, basically, the this is gonna be a wizard, right? A configuration a wizard that is going to help us to configure our project as you can see it has created automatically a package to json right with the name and etc and right now i don't have any dependency because i need to specify what I, what i want to do okay the first thing that we we have to configure is that or define huh i don't know why i specify this let me let me start again i'm sorry guys i think that it is needed or required to get this, to, to, to explain you, well, all the details of this installation, right? Okay, now here it is again, the configuration wizard. Now it is asking me for, um, what well, what is the language that I want to use, right? If it is JavaScript or TypeScript, and also um, what test runner do I want to use? For example, I can use the Nightwatch test runner, the Mocha test runner, the Cucumber JS or the Nightwatch test runner using TypeScript. Okay, that's something interesting. If you want to, I want to use the the standard one for this video. Maybe in, in the next ones, if you want to see more of Nightwatch, I can use, for example, Cucumber JS or Mocha JS or TypeScript to see how it works. But in my case, in this first video, I'll be using JavaScript. Then it is asking me if I want to run my tests in my local machine or if I have a remote machine or um, a cloud provider such as, such as browser stack, I can configure both of them or only that, um, that option. In my case, I'll be using my local computer, right? Then it is asking me what or uh, which browsers uh, do I want to use? Let's imagine that I want to use Chrome and Firefox, okay? And then um, it is asking me for the test folder or the folder where I want to have my tests, right? In my case, I'll be leaving this as default tests, right? And the base URL in case I do have a, a website for particular uh, where I want to do my automation work, right? Then it is asking me for allow Nightwatch to anonymously collect usage, usage metrics. If you want to, in my case, I'll be saying no for now because this is a demo. And then it is asking me if I would like to run your end-to-end -end tests on mobile devices as well. That's something that you can do. You can send your um, your well, your tests to uh, real devices, right, or emulated devices. So in my case, I'll be saying no. All right. Then it is going to install a. Well, it's going to proceed to install the different components of the framework. For example, Nightwatch, which is going to be the first one. Then it is going to proceed to install the different browsers, uh, I'm sorry, um, well, the drivers, right? The Chrome driver in the, and the Firefox driver in this particular case, right? Because I'm using, uh, 
that that those are the options that I selected here in the wizard, right? Chrome and Firefox. All right, it is just a matter of seconds. You can see that right now it is downloading the Firefox Geekko driver, and then it is downloading the Chrome driver as well. All right, that's beautiful. Let's just wait for a few seconds. Also, you can see that automatically. Now, as soon as this was uh, done, uh, it is telling us that to get it started, check out the following templates, okay? It has generated automatically a Nightwatch folder here. And you can see that in the examples part, here we have some examples of, for example, the basic example, custom assertions, page objects, okay? You can see here a page object example. Let me show you this. All right, uh, we can use as well, or we can see accessibility tests here if we want to see how it works. In my case today, guys, I want to use the, the standard ones, the basic ones to see how it works, okay? So if you see um, the terminal as well, it is telling us how to run the Nightwatch tests, okay? It is telling us that if we want to run all the examples, we can run this command over here. Okay, what it's doing is basically MPX, Nightwatch, which is the framework, and then we're specifying where um, I do have my, well, the examples, right? It is gonna run all the scripts under this particular folder. Or then also we can run a single example, okay? For example, we can specify the under examples and basic, the ecosia.js uh, script here, okay? I'll be doing this because I want to show you how it works. I'm going to copy the command and I'll be pasting this in the, in the console, right? Okay. You're going to see that, uh, well, there is a new instance of Chrome, right? And it is working fine. Okay. And also if I explore the framework structure, it, it has automatically generated the tests under output folder, which, uh, or, or where we can find an automatic a HTML report that was generated, okay? So if I explore here this, you're gonna see that, um, okay? It is gonna open a new instance with this beautiful report here. Now you watch JS, that's report, and you can see, well, the different uh, tests that were executed. And here we have check, 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 because everything is working fine. Okay, guys, it's beautiful, right? It's it's simple. It generates automatically an HTML report. Also, um, there is another, um, well, the JSON with all the details and an XML. All right, masters, let's understand what is happening in this Ecosia.js um, example, right? Okay, the first thing that I think that it is important to mention, right? I'll be opening this link. I'll be well, providing you these links in the description the BDD description, right? But it is actually using the BDD test syntax, okay? Let's uh, read about this. Uh, starting with Nightwatch version 1.3, you can use the, the popular BDD interfaces for writing tests, okay? So um, here we have the different, uh, well, functions, right, that we can use. We can use describe in context, right, to probably create a kind of a suite for the rest of the tests. And then we can use test, eat, or specify for individual test uh, cases, right? And then we have like the hooks, right? To, well, run something before the all the suite or after the whole suite. And then we have the before each for every single eat or test. And then after each for every single after eat or test, right? Um, that's beautiful. Um, Okay, here we have an instruction. Nightwatch doesn't support nested describe and context declarations. Currently, you can only use describe to define the name for the test suite. That's important because in other frameworks, we can use like nested describe and context just to organize better uh, what we want to do. That's pretty interesting. And here we have an example, right? With the one that we were checking in our Visual Studio code. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's let's see what is happening inside of the ecosia.js file. And well, you can see the describe, which is like the main suite, okay? And then we have like a before and after hook, okay? The before is going to, um, well, it is gonna navigate to the website that where I wanna do the, the test, right? Uh, let's review here the, the hints. 
navigate to a new URL. This method will also call the on browser navigate that's global right after the page is loaded. This is important. Also, I think that you can have more information of every single command in the API uh, tab here, right? So for example, if I look for navigation here, let me see where, where it should be that. Um, da -da -da. Navigation here. Navigate to here. This is the command that we were using in the example, right? Browser that navigate to. And here you can see uh, more details about it, the different parameters, what it is expecting, the type string, the callback is going to be a function. And here we have more information and examples of how to use it, right? That's beautiful. I like the documentation as well. Also, you can see the after a hook here, and it is basically a browser that end to close the instance, right? Or end the, ses the session actually, right? If I take a look at this, end the session, uses session protocol command, all right? That's beautiful. So we're just uh, creating the, the new instance and then just closing the session. That's beautiful. And then inside of the it, here you have, um, well, the structure. You can see that it's gonna receive the title of the test and then it is going to receive the callback function, okay? And, uh, and always it is using this browser uh, callback, right? Um, I, I do, I want to show you something here. Um, I, I wanted to see like an explanation in the documentation about this browser um, callback parameter, right? And well, it is basically um, like the main API, okay? To to be the context, um, to, right? it is gonna reference the, the main API, the browser, right? That's something that I read about and I just wanted to bring to this video. And then you can see that I can use the browser, right, in the, in, in, the, in the ETH itself, right? To do different actions. For example, wait for an element visible, right? Uh, uh, in this particular command, you can see that we're, we're just uh, waiting until the body is visible in the in our browser, that's beautiful. And then we can do assertions like title contains, right? So probably if I come here to the website and I check the title, mm -hmm, you're gonna see that if I look for the title tag, it has a value, a cost, yeah, the search engine that plants trees, all right? So it is just making sure that that title contains a cost, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, I'm sorry, guys. And you can see that it contains a cost, yeah, that's, that's correct. Then um, I'm making sure that this particular selector is visible. Let's let's find what is or, yeah what what is this this particular selector? Okay, you can see that it is basically the search bar over here. Okay, and then the next action that this is doing is basically looking for night watch. Okay, so I'm gonna reproduce the action here. And you can see that um, I can. Um, click on the button type submit okay probably is this one right let me see um i don't know let me just find this selector Let's see what this selector is okay yeah this is the like this button here so i'm gonna t uh, press it right because i'm doing this click in the framework and then it is making sure that um this particular selector all right, let's see. Mm -hmm. There it is. Has or contains the text Nightwatch.js. Okay. And as you can see, probably this main has the yeah Nightwatch.js in, in, in its body. All right. So uh, I hope that you see the, the power of a uh, Nightwatch JS. If you want to see more of this kind of videos, I do have more information for this video, to, to be honest. I, I wanted to review the test environments, the globals, uh, how we can run multiple environments at the same time, how the concurrency works in this framework. I do have all this stuff, but I think that I'll be saving this for a second part because it's a long video right now <laughs> and I don't want to have a one hour video. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed uh, the first part, uh, this introduction to Nightwatch, and probably in the next videos we can keep learning about this beautiful framework. So guys, I thank you. I just wanted to say thank you again, and and see you in the next one, masters. Thank you very much, and this was your media. Bye bye.